Julie Ward, Labour MEP for the North West. Tell me a bit about your, your background. What inspired you to become an MEP for the region? Um, I worked in the North West in the early 80s um, when Thatcher was in power and that politicised me. So that's the first thing that happened. Um, I'm actually a theatre worker, an artist. Um, I work with communities using the arts for um, empowerment and to help people find their voice, to help them to explore different issues about, about their lives and ultimately to, you know, to make, give people confidence to feel that they can shape their own destinies. Um, so I was working in Manchester with very vulnerable young people. Um, I ran a disability arts organisation that covered Cumbria. Um, I worked in uh, East Lancashire in those very those very poor communities around Blackburn and you know so but that was a long time ago meanwhile I moved to the northeast of England I'd established a, an, an artist cooperative which I've been running for 30 years um, and I'm about to leave that <laughs> and this is my new job um, what propelled me to uh, put my name down um, and apply for uh, uh, to be a candidate was in fact distress and anger and I can't really describe it in any other way. I was losing sleep. Um, I was very distressed about the anti-Europe rhetoric. Um, through my cultural work I've done all, all kinds of extraordinary projects with um, partners right across Europe where we found common ground and realised that actually we all want the same thing, you know, we, we, we're basically human beings um, living on this earth, it's the only one we've got and we've got to make it work and actually culture and arts can often be a tool for that. Um, so I've been doing that for quite a long time. I worked in Ukraine, in Moldova, in Turkey. I've, um, my organisation runs a, a peace school in Germany every year and we're the British partners for that. So I had all that kind of really, really positive stuff going on about what Europe truly is, and I believe it really is, this incredibly um, uh, functional um, organisation of people who want to... Um, you know, who want to do the best for the world, actually. So yeah. what are you hoping to do as an MEP? How are you hoping to perhaps counter some of that uh, anti-Europe uh, Europe feeling, uh, which, is, which is very strong at the moment? You know, UKIP performed very, very well in, in the election, um, and there's a lot of, certainly, misunderstanding about Europe and, uh, and, and uh, scepticism too. Um, well, I don't think it's enough, you know, to stick the European logo on a, on a pop-up in an exhibition, all right? And I was at the National Adult Learning Awards in London last night. I'm a champion of adult learners, and they're mostly people who've fallen through everything, every single net you can imagine and have found later in life that they can, they can be recognised for, you know, their potential. And um, the ESF, the European Social Fund, has funded that programme of work. Um, but nobody's really talking about it, you know, nobody, ESF, what does it mean? You know, it's a logo, uh, people truly don't understand. And I was thinking last night at the meeting, actually some context about how, how the European Social Fund had made all those things possible for those people and what's at stake if we lose it that those people, and they were people um, um, uh, getting out of crime, there were people coming off drugs, there were people with disabilities who'd never been given a chance before, there were people who've had bereavement and who've had mental health problems, um, older people who've been out of work, you know, young people who can't get into work. All those people have been supported through a European Social Fund programme. And I'm not sure who's telling them that. I'm not sure if that narrative is ever clearly articulated. Um, and I think as a country we've got lazy about it. I mean, that's a huge job you're potentially taking onto your, your shoulders in practical ways. How are you thinking that you might be able to, 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 to send a clearer message, perhaps, and, uh, and be an advocate for, I, I imagine, arts and culture, which is areas you're particularly interested in? Um. I think, I think we've just got to keep telling the story and we've got to tell it in more interesting ways. I suppose that's what I'm saying. And um, I mean, I work in the communication industry, that's what I do. And so all the people I work with actually understand. So, you know, and that's because we have conversations about it. And those conversations are going on both through programmes, but they're actually happening informally as well. And we're provoking those conversations and we're, we're presenting, you know, different arguments. I mean, Europe's... You know, the, it's not perfect, 
but it's a growing institution it's changing it, it it's like anything it you know it can it can grow it can change it needs to respond but the fact that we're here as elected representatives i think is the most it's such a powerful message i'm only here because people took part in the democratic process to elect me to be here and I'm, a, I'm an ordinary pe person who's never been in politics before. And that should give people hope. I never expected to be selected. I, you know, I didn't expect to be elected. Here I am, and other people could be doing what I'm doing. Other people could be making that journey to talk about what matters to them back there, here in this, here in this building. And actually, I think more of the, and what I'm really concerned to do is to make sure that my office and offices, because we'll have an office here and an office back home, that the two offices are really, really functional and that they're communicating with each other and that the people who work here in Brussels know that the most important thing actually is to make sure that the people back home know why what happens here matters and how it impacts on their daily lives. Okay, then a brief um, answer then to sum some of that up, then, if you will. Um, you know, your priorities then for your, your five year mandate ahead, um, where are you going to be putting your energy and your focus? What areas are you going to be looking at? Okay, I'm, I'm here really to speak up for people who don't have a voice. Um, so I'm an advocate for people with disabilities, I'm an adv advocate for women, for children, for young people. And, um, and for older people too, you know, I'm, I'm an older woman who's become elected as well and um, often people of my age are kind of thrown on the scrap heap. So I feel what I'm here to do is to really think about those, those people who feel disempowered, those people who are on the periphery. My constituency includes um, Cumbria, a very, very rural area, and the bit of West Cumbria, the coastal bit of West Cumbria, is particularly peripheral. And, never seems to be included in all sorts of conversations about the region or you know, in, in, in European terms. And I've made a very big commitment to make sure that the people in those peripheral areas, in those rural areas, in those forgotten places, actually know who their MEP is, know what their MEP does, can have conversations with them, and that I, I can take action on that and bring those, those concerns back here.